Hey y'all, I'm Todd Bailey. What's up? It's Ari Lumberdozy. And this is fucking brutal. Get in the pit, stock up the fridge, and listen. We're here to cover the latest in metal news and craft beer. A match made in hell. If it makes you bang your head, then we want to hear it. If it tickles your taste buds, share those suds. Turn it up to 11. Crack open that beer. It's about to get brutal. What's up there, Hopples? It's your boys, Ari, Todd, back with Brutal episode number 84. Uh, one of our favorite, new favorite times of the year. We're going to be covering a lot of our favorites from the last quarter, Q2 of this year. Um, lots of great things have dropped within the last few months, so it was very hard to come up with a list, but that is for later in the episode. What's good, dude? How are you? How's your week been? How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good, man. Uh, like I texted you the other day, I, I'm going to be heading back to news. I never thought I'd hear those words from my mouth, but uh, this is a uh, mental health choice just because uh, current job, I'm a little miserable sitting at a desk for long hours of the day. So this will yeah. provide the opportunity for me to be out and about doing things around Austin. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm pretty pumped now. It's, it's just a waiting game because uh, they got to find somebody to replace me before I move. So if you're an editor and want to live in Austin, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> but specifically reference Todd from Brutal. Yes. So they know exactly who you're talking about. I, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, but how about yourself, man? I, I know you you wrote down not much to report, but uh, you have uh, some exciting things coming forward, I believe, with projects. Yeah, there's there's a couple a couple weeks where like I'll be traveling. Uh, like I have to go to D.C. in a few weeks. Uh, then I have to go to San Diego like after that, not too long after that. And, uh, so there's there's a lot of things coming up. So nothing really to report other than. You know the air quality from the Canadian wildfires that like uh, Canada. Yeah, I I feel for Canada this time. Like yeah. that, it's it's real bad up there. Like bad enough that we're getting some of the the residue coming off of all the the stuff with the ozone. That just the the quality there has not been great. So I've been I've been inside pretty much the entire week, which which is not a bad thing. Sometimes it's it's tough. Like Todd said, like you get stir crazy and. Uh, especially when I don't have things going on and I, I have to spend time indoors. It, you know, it gets a little tough there, but mm. some good stuff coming up. And uh, for us here in America, we have one of the uh, the most prized holidays, <laughs> I guess you could say. Uh, <laughs> not by everyone, but yeah, 4th of July is coming up for us uh, next week. But mm -hmm. for everyone in the States, happy 4th of July. And, uh, you know, everyone, please also, you don't have to celebrate 4th of July with us, but just celebrate being here, listening yeah. to, to your favorite podcast. So we'll, we'll cheers. That's the true holiday right there. 4th of Brutal. I'd love to hear it. Oh, dear. I'm going to get things started uh, since we're cheersing to this glorious weekend uh, with my beer. I actually chose this brewery to start with because it's Independence Brewing Co. I thought that was a nice touch to uh the day and the weekend you're, you're uh, so witty so witty <laughs> i chose geister zug that i can't wait to chug ha, rhymes nice uh, it is a kolsch german style beer it's coming in at five percent uh, and actually i have the ibu their website is fantastic they have so much information uh the brewery is from austin uh the can art i'll hold this up uh it's a it's mostly black matte but they have this like little sky blue circle. Uh, and in that circle, it has a ghost train, uh, which I guess is what Geister Zug means. Uh, it's a picture of like a gold train. And then it's got a skull at the front uh, with a pipe on his head with the smoke coming out. Oh, I kind of wish, yeah. wish it was coming out of his mouth, but that's just me. Should have been like double fist and like had the one up top, the one in, yeah. the, one in the front. Should have been going off the rails too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't see any rails, so but it's, it's true. My favorite part, though, is actually not even the train. There's a scythe right below the name, which kind of underlines it. 
Uh, that's actually pretty sick, uh, if you will. Nice, nice. So let's do a taste test, and then I'll talk about the beer itself. Uh, I've had a lot of Kolsch's. They're pretty much a Pilsner <laughs> in my mind, but uh, I don't see this divvying too far from what it, the style of beer is. Oh, yeah, that, that's pretty much on point with what I was expecting, although it's a, it's actually a lot heavier. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's it's a little heavier. It, it They definitely pulled from some good ingredients, which I'll talk about. I actually didn't mention it. I, I was supposed to uh, 22 IBU, so it's it's not too bitter. <laughs> that's refreshing. You can definitely taste the German influence on this, even though it's brewed here in America. So I like that. I like that they kind of used uh, ingredients that would make it taste almost like from the homeland. Uh, I'm going to go sure. skip it, skip ahead to the ingredients. So the malts are German Pilsner, white wheat, and carafoam. Uh, the hops are Hallertau, uh, Middlefra, and Tetnager. And then the yeast is Kolsch Ale. So I, I think that matters from with what I'm tasting, which is awesome. Here's the website description, though. Uh, the Ger German city of Cologne uh, is known for three things. Uh, E.U. de Cologne, Cologne, which is perfume, I guess. <laughs> uh, the cold style of beer, a uniquely crisp and clean, top-fermented, cold-conditioned ale. I taste that with every ounce, so I am recommending this even before I get further. They go on to say the biggest and most raucous carnival celebration in Europe is based around this beer. I don't know if that's a fact or not. I, this is news to me, but uh, I would love to be part of that celebration. Uh, they say I'll find that, that ghost train. Mm -hmm. They say this epic citywide party rages for six days and nights leading up to Lent. Oh, I see how y'all party. Unlike other carnivals, whose big party is Mardi Gras, uh, Cologne's week-long celebration packs in so much debauchery that the city's residents refer to it as the fifth season. Each that's day features so a uh, yeah. Each day features a theme parade and on Saturday night, a macabre procession called the Geister Zug. Okay. Winds its way through the city center. That's what's up. Uh, this ghastly horde of ghouls and ghosts welcomes all revelers to join the train so long as they've dressed the part. So don your spookiest garb, fill your strings, nice. uh, you know, fill your cup of Kolsch and we'll go ghost parading, setting the nubbles on fire all aboard. That's what's up, dude. I should have read this before. <laughs> 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 that's what happens man uh that's cool i actually really that's cool i'm glad that they provided that on a website they also provided some food pairings so i'm gonna list those off uh it pairs well with like a rye bun with gouda and raw onions curry worst and fries that's a favorite of mine uh veal schnitzel himmel and odd which is mashed potatoes and apple uh we have met brocken i don't know what that is and then schwein mm. Swine something, which is crispy pork knuckle. I've seen that. I haven't had that. Uh, yeah. Liberwurst, hummus, uh, and then a bee sting cake. That's interesting. And then a cherry trifle. Man, they, they got these down pat, man. They must yeah. have done their research. That's cool, though. I, I love seeing food pairings because I always like mm -hmm. wonder how to elevate a beer, and it's kind of through food that you're eating. Yeah, that is, that's super cool that anytime... You can have something, just give it that that different experience, like you said. When you when you have something yeah. paired correctly, it really elevates both the the food and the, I guess, the beverage in a way. But mm -hmm. sounds but, cool. Uh, Looks good. Yeah. How about you, sir? Uh, you said you have an NA thing today, which I'm very interested. That yes. Um, so for anyone that hasn't seen this or doesn't have TikTok. It's Grimace's birthday and Yo. <laughs> That's that's what I got here, dude. I got the Grimace shake. And no like shit. <laughs> I didn't realize this until we got there, but uh like tomorrow's the last day that mm. they're having it, so I'm like, fuck. This worked out nicely. And um yeah, so the the TikTok trend is so fucking funny todd sent me so many of them this past week and also uh my wife sky has been showing me so many but anyway for anyone that doesn't know what i'm talking about on tiktok for some reason the grimace shake 
has become the uh, the topic of like this like absurdist humor trend where where basically like you take a sip and then it shows you in some way having been murdered or like people will be like in the back of trunks like sacrificing and dude it's it's wild uh <laughs> i was like okay I don't know. I, I had this thought the other day. I was like, Grimace Shake would be just funny since this is like a celebratory episode anyway. But uh, yeah, I had one sip downstairs and it is good. Uh, and it's actually like it's purple here. And you can see on the the lovely celebration cup. I think Grimace is 52 this year. Super oh, weird. Shit. Yeah. Um, I didn't know he's that old. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Skylar showed me a really funny one with the uh, like one of the higher ups in McDonald's doing the challenge too. So like they're well aware that this is happening uh, and they're embracing it, which is fucking great. Anyway, I'm going to take a sip here. Hop wolves. Uh, yeah. First milkshake on the show. Usually it's an IPA. Uh, I've no, while he's taking a sip. Uh, part of the TikTok too is, is the, the cup of grimaces shake is usually splattered <laughs> as part of the scene. It's it's so funny, dude. It's it's pretty tasty. You can kind of taste like how like sugary it is because it is uh, again, it's purple, but it's not just like vanilla dyed purple. There's actually berry flavor in there, too. I was going to ask, like, what what fruit did they go with? I actually was thinking grape. Yeah, I mean, I think I think grape is in there, but just perp. Yeah, no, I mean, it's now that you say that, like, I could taste it a little bit more. Well, it's a good time, dude. It's it's fruity, which is weird. Don't usually get like that type of milkshake. It's fun. It's funny with the TikTok trend. And I just thought it would be cool to have it here. So unfortunately, it'll probably be gone by the time this is out. So I apologize for everyone that didn't get to experience Grimace's birthday like this. But if you have a chance, check it out. Very tasty. Dude, I'm so glad you included that for this episode. <laughs> you didn't tell me at all what you were drinking. And so I actually thought it was an NA beer, but. Which which would be cool. I, I have had like a, a couple that I've wanted to bring on the show, but like I, I couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that that'd be fun. We should try to incorporate more like NA beers. Not all the time, but you know, every once in a while, kind of like me getting a milkshake. So very tasty. But this is a preamble because the metal news this week, they're all like really fucking sad. Yeah. We're going to bring the mood down just for a moment. That's right. Because it is, these are both very important. Anyone that is a Polaris fan, Ryan CU has unfortunately passed away. Uh, th this actually happened like about two weeks ago, but it was made public. This past week for, via the band. So that's devastating. Uh, mm -hmm. Polaris is a great metalcore band. You know, we, we don't always get to talk to, about them, excuse me, on the show here, just because we're always focusing on like more heavy genres. But Polaris is amazing. If you like metalcore, especially Australian metalcore like we do here on Brutal, uh, they're up there. They are an amazing band. Brian was an amazing guitarist. So... We're going to read the the band's statement here. There's a little bit more to it on their Instagram, but we'll link that if you're not already following the band. But they said, in a very heartfelt statement, it is with shattered hearts and the deepest sorrow that we tell you our dear brother and bandmate, Ryan Sue, passed away on the morning of Monday, June 19th. Uh, for reference, it is June 30th when we're recording. He was 26 years old, and for 10 incredible years, he was our best friend and artistic soulmate, those years will never be enough. He was kind hearted, kind hearted and clever. He was funny and brave and creative, and he was talented beyond, beyond all measure. He loved art and beauty in all its forms. He loved good food and great company. He loved Harry Potter and psych thrillers and crime documentaries. He loved music more diversely than you could ever imagine and spoke its language in ways that only the rarest among us do. And most of all, he loved and adored his family and friends. He was also much admired and beloved by so many. Ryan, we will love and miss you for the rest of our days, and we will never fill the hole that you leave in all of our lives. So, again, that was via the band. Obviously, devastating. That, that's, yeah. that's terrible. And, and 
I had mentioned before uh, a week prior to this, the uh, the band released a uh, a statement just saying that they had to withdraw from all their European shows and tours that were going on because of a, a critical personal matter. And unfortunately, this was the matter. So we'll take a moment here on Brutal for Ryan and his family, friends. Cheers, friend. Hopefully you're at peace. Cheers to you, brother. So I guess on a final note for that, um, the band has a new album coming out called Fatalism. That's going to be out uh, September 1st via uh, Resist and Sharp Tones. So we just got to spin the shit out of that record. That's that's really it. I mean, it's, it's going to hit different for sure. And, and I've been listening to Polaris all week and um, their lyrics definitely hit a lot harder, too, because I, I do. It hasn't been said how Ryan passed away. But I know he was dealing with a lot of like mental health issues. I I think I remember seeing something, uh, some posts about him doing better at the time, and mm-hmm. so hopefully, you know, he 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 is at peace there. And uh, but I guess what I'm getting as the best way to honor his memory would be to let his legacy live on through the music that he created. So, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Let's let's keep uh, the train rolling there, dude. What what else we got? There's another, yeah, not great uh, situation here. This th- this one has a silver lining at the end of it, uh, at least. Uh, so it is with sadness uh, that uh, you're the knife. Actually, endured a very bad van accident, uh, and singer Maddie Watkins is still in critical condition. Uh, so our prayers and thoughts go out to her. Hopefully. Uh, she's able to make a, a full recovery. Yeah. Per the GoFundMe page, the band was traveling from Salt Lake City to Colorado Springs when their van collided with an 18-wheeler. Uh, Andy and Aaron sustained broken legs and other trauma. Brandon uh, got concussed. And then Maddie is in critical condition from head and spinal injuries, along with a few broken bones. Uh, but a GoFundMe was set up, which is awesome. A lot of people have donated and they've actually already exceeded their goal of a hundred thousand, which is so awesome and shows just how much the community supports. Uh, But donations are still open. So please help out if you're able to, because I know the vehicle they were in, I actually think was the personal vehicle. Uh, So so the band itself is without their means of transportation. Uh, But of course their, their well-being matters first. And so hopefully uh, this money can be used towards uh, any medical bills. I'm sure they're they're probably going to yeah. have to sustain. So, only the best for them. We we do wish uh, everyone a full recovery, and hopefully uh, they can get back to doing what they love. Because uh, I know in the hardcore scene, uh, they focus on a lot of good things in their music. I know they were a lot about the community, so they're definitely going to be missed while they're out right now, uh, and. We're hoping Maddie pulls through from everything. Uh, I hate hearing the words critical condition. That's a toss up in my mind. I'm I'm just hoping for the best. Yeah, I I, I feel the same way, dude. Um, yeah, just again, another way that you can be supportive is by listening to the music, keeping it alive, and and of course buying buying merch and anything that that can help the band out. Again, if you're able to, so. Thoughts and prayers for the Year of the Knife family. Much love to Ryan's, CU's family and friends. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Tough, tough week in the community for sure. Uh, but we're going to try to get back up a little bit here because it can't be all doom and gloom. Uh, we're going with the albums and the CBB for the week here. Again, another another stellar stellar week, and and this one was cool because at least the the ones that stuck out to us, album and track wise, uh, weren't like weren't really any big names. So yeah. a lot of a lot of like really cool, um, even if they're not like up and coming, but just like I I guess to us not as much talked about. So anyway, that's kind of cool when it's it's more it's not like so top heavy with with a lot of like big time releases. Okay, so. First off, we're starting with uh, 
Es- Esser? Asar? Asar. Asar, yeah. I apologize, of course, for any mispronunciations here. Uh, but Asar with their EP from Nothing to Nowhere. Then we have Adrian with Summer's Beginning. That's also an EP. And then Avogada. I think I think that's pretty close. Dropped one, the faceless one specifically. Followed up by Crow Mouth with their Low Life EP. Death Ray Vision with No Mercy from Electric Eyes. Edward Stray with Gone with the Flow. That one, I don't know why I had like such a hard time. Even in my even in my brain, I'm just like, go with the flow, gone with the flow, gone with the wind. It's all over the place. But uh, yes. that album's actually super fucking good. So to keep it going, then we have Gone Cold with Misery and Hindsight EP, Iron Rule with Soul Death EP, Loma Prieta with Last. That was probably like the best attempt I could give it. That was actually uh, really nice. Thanks, man. Uh, then we have Mutual Hostility with Inhuman Anguish, Pyroxium Unit with Fragmentation Stratagem, Protect This City in Memory of Nothing, uh, Revenge Beast with their self-titled album, Serpent of Old with Ensemble Under the Dark Sun, Spine with Races, and then we have Static Abyss with Aborted from Reality, Metal as Fuck, uh, The t- the Cartographer with the Cold Black EP. This is a really fun one. The Triceratops Experiment with Dacian EP. Vampire Squad Decade of Mutiny 1. That's an EP. And then last but not least, another Dino reference, which is always fun for us. Uh, Exo Armor from Nublar. What do you think, dude? It, what, what stood out to you this week? Again, with with not like a, a lot of a lot of bands we're not familiar with, so so it's a lot of like really cool new finds. So uh, for most of these, I haven't listened to them fully. Uh, in a way, I've listened to a small sample of each uh, to add them to the list. But uh, once I actually listened to Loma Prieta, is a solid post hardcore release. So if you like that kind of flavor and genre, uh, definitely check that out. Iron Rule is a solid slab of metal. That was an awesome EP to listen to. Uh, but I'm very much looking forward to the XL Armor for the Jurassic Park reference. Uh, if you don't know, uh, the island of Nublar is one of the islands. I think that's the Lost World Island. Yeah, I think so. Uh, and even the album art, I think, has like a raptor on it or something. Mm-hmm. If, someone, if someone doesn't do the raptor scream on this album, it's wasted potential yeah can't wait to check that out the triceratops <laughs> experiments i will check out uh, <laughs> static abyss that's some really good death metal i remember and there was one other one on one i did want to check out uh elwood stray because i actually i remember hearing about them and the fact that you give them a stamp of approval i i want to check that out yeah, I didn't get a chance to listen to all of Elwood Stray, but from what I did, it was a lot of fun, and it was like more like a like a post hardcore type of de- deal. And I believe they are from Germany too. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, so that that was a fun album. Uh, the Crow Mouth and Iron Rule, those ones have your boy chomping at the bit to throw down to. Uh, I mean, of course, we could go on and on about like each ones individually, but trying to keep them more concise uh yeah so another like pretty solid day pretty excited for that and also the certified brutal bankers what do we got there friend reno yeah we are starting off hot and heavy with orphan they just released a new one called hourglass it deserves to be at the top dude uh i don't even know if you can make out any of the lyrics i'm pretty sure (laughs) you cannot uh a lot of lows a lot of gutturals and we love to hear it yeah Next up, Snuffed On Sight, dude, with their song Slippin'. Fantastic. Uh, pretty much on par with Orphan, uh, with a fucking beatdown, to yeah. be expected. Next up, we have State of Filth with their song Curbside Homicide. Love the single art for this. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> much like Jason Voorhees, which is always up my alley. Yep. Next up, Atoll with their song Human Extract, just as heavy. Number five, Castiel, who's been appearing on our list a lot. Uh, they just released Cali with a K, 
they're an interesting band. I don't know much about them, but they're heavy as fuck and they're welcome here. <laughs> yeah. Next up, we have Tyrantula, Florida. We actually just had a special guest, Mitchell of 830 Audio on. He's uh, the mastermind behind this band. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one's featuring Abhorrent Abomination and the song is called Severed Limbs Symphony. Uh, he can't miss with these names, dude, and those samples, those audio samples that he uses in songs. They're there. Bravissimo. That's right. Next up, we have Empire of Ash with their song Catalyst, and this is featuring Andrew Patterson and Alex Coates. Uh, I just didn't spend the time to look up (laughs) what bands they're from, but... Yeah, I I didn't either. Sorry, guys. It's it's okay, Andrew and Alex. Forgive us. (laughs) Next up, we have Crypta with their song trial of traitors after that underneath the gun with burial crown uh and then this band i really love uh they're from australia they're very new so this is the first single since their first album the band is ascent of autumn and the song is psychosis i think like metalcore but with deathcore influences i love it after that we're taking a trip to russia for a second with call the vatican uh, with their song Mech, I think it's, I don't know how to say it, but uh, it means revenge, and that's all you need to know. After that, we have Drowning in Fear, which features uh, members from the last 10 seconds of life and Searching Serenity, and the song is called Cause and Effect. After that, we have Mouth Breather with You Try to Die. <laughs> Love the song title. No, no, you try to die. No, you try. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the band As Beings with their song Intruder. Then we have the band Somewhere to Call Home with their song Lessons and then in parentheses Unwanted Part 2. After that, we have Monosphere with their song Human Disguise. Then we have Observist with Familiar. To round it out, we have three more songs left. We have Locust with Parasitic, Orthodox with a new one called Soaking Nerves. And then last but not least, Weeping Womb uh, with their song Light Blooms. And it's all lowercase light dot blooms. Uh, I had to include them, dude. I, I, this one got like lost in the shuffle and I kept switching yeah. out the last song on the list. And I was like, oh no, we're, we're featuring these guys. <laughs> but, uh, those last two are standouts for me. Orthodox. I love their last album, uh, Weeping Wound. I, they're just, they do a cool little new metal with hardcore and I just love what they do. Uh, other standouts were Orphan and Snuffed on Sight, and then Castiel, dude. It's just solid tracks every time we feature them. So whatever this is leading up to, I can't wait. But how about for you, man? There's a lot of solid tracks on this list. Yes, there are. Uh, the one that really stood out to me, and I think it was just the the lyrics, because they they were like they're pretty heavy lyrics, but it was like talked about in a way that like I, I feel like I don't really hear in songs. Anyway. I'm rambling on. I really like the Drowning in Fear track. Uh, I wasn't familiar with this band. I think they popped up on the Deathcore subreddit, which is a fantastic place to go. I love frequenting that one. Uh, everyone's pretty cool in there, so that's always a plus. But yeah, anyway, unfamiliar with that that particular band, but I really, really liked what they were doing. And of course, the the feature is, uh, is great. Uh, but then pretty much to... To echo what Todd said, Orphan, I was super stoked for, and they have an EP dropping very soon, which yes. is so, so sick. Their, um, their first one, Porcelain, was one of my favorites from last year, and, and I legit still cry to the last song on that album. I feel like in a mirror track right now. But anyway, mm-hmm. very excited for what those guys have going on. The Castiel, Underneath the Gun was a pleasant surprise. I, I wasn't expecting that song to be like as good as it was. And, and when I was listening to it, just kind of like in the background, like, dude, who the fuck? And like, wow, underneath the gun, you know, they still got it. So that was cool. And uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of really good stuff this week. But uh, there's also a lot that uh, that I want to listen to more like the Orthodox and the Weeping Wound. I didn't get like too far down in the list there. Yeah, uh, I forgot to mention, too, that Ascent of Autumn, like that. I think, wait, actually, I might have mentioned that. Anyway, I'm going to promote them again. They are an up-and-coming band, so go check them out. I'm very pleased with that, what they are doing and how they sound. But we're going to keep this thing rolling, man. Uh, we are getting into our best of Q2, and this is pretty much 
as Ari would say, our meat and potatoes, but this time it's a full serving <laughs> of meat and potatoes. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna start things off with our list of top five featured beers of Q2. Remember, so this is pretty much like April till now, end of June. Keep trying to make sure people know that we're not just about metal on this <laughs> podcast. We're also about beer. So we're going to start with our top five featured beers. So these are ones we've talked about on the show. And so we rank them as our favorites. Uh, so number five, we're going to go from five to one on each one of these lists. Uh, at number five, I have free tail brewing kettle with the belly block that actually impressed me enough. Nice. I'm going to include it. I love the can art alone. And I always compare to shiner Bach Cause that to me is like, mm-hmm upper echelon so they did a great right. job uh and it had like a like a darker tone to it as far as mm-hmm. like the flavor which i really like which set it apart but after that at number four i have austin beer works dark romance chocolate cherry porter nice that was a treat <laughs> and i still think about that beer so i can't <laughs> wait to get my hands on another one at number the three temptation. it's a temptation <laughs> And number three, Modern Times Beer with their Fruitland Sour Tropical Fruit Goza. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised with that. I usually don't go for sours unless I like the fruit's right. And for this right. one, it pretty much hit all the right marks. So Modern Times, look them up. Make sure you try out a beer from them. At number two, though, Martin House Brewing Co. Uh, with their Four Grain Breakfast Beer. That was a cereal of a beer in my mouth and i loved it there was notes <laughs> of like the milk and the honey so it was kind of think like honey nut cheerios in a glass in a way and it was fantastic so that really left an impression but the number one which has stayed there is <laughs> Celis brewery with their pesh belgian style fruit beer oh yeah that was a peach in a can and i can't not have it at number one so <laughs> it is staying there for right now as my top beer of the year in a way so looking out at all your breweries <laughs> let's see if there's one that'll change my mind but that that's my number one man i recommend that to anyone yeah i remember you really liking that one and and i am surprised that that breakfast beer wasn't number one because like you brought it up in so many like subsequent episodes <laughs> this, this is very true <laughs> yeah, maybe if i have it again i'll sneak back up there because i What's funny is the I think the day of or the weekend of I had that peach one. We went to the brewery and I had another one. And so that kind of sticks yeah. in my mind. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I, I think those are all all solid picks there, sir. I'm I'm happy to see the stout in in the mix. I, I, I actually I legitimately forgot about like pretty much all the beers that like I had and that you had. So I was like, I, I don't even remember what he had. Uh, so that was, that was kind of like a, a nice little surprise. Cause usually I'll go mm-hmm. back and like, we, we haven't been posting like the beers themselves other than the videos. So now I have like no reference point. <laughs> Dude, same here. Thankfully I like made this list up and then I had to like go back and look at some of the old pictures and thankfully they're dated. Yeah. I, I think I just went back to all of the notes that we had for the past three months and be like, what was what? Um, so yeah, solid list. So at number five, was the Juice Bomb from Sloop Brewing Co. That was a, uh, a NEPA New England IPA. Says it all, Juice Bomb. It was very flavorful, very citrusy. Felt like a bomb. It was the bomb. And uh, yeah, I love the presentation of the can and what the brew is all about as far as being representative from queer supporting people. So that was, that was really cool. Uh, the whole package is what I'm getting at. It was very impressive to me. Uh, number four was the sour meat unicorn farts from Duke Claw Brewing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that that one, like I said on the episode, like it's always just a ton of fun. Like it is, even if I didn't like the beer itself, like it would still be fun to be like, oh, this is edible glitter. Like it's a really playful can. Uh, but it's actually like a good sour, and you can't go wrong with edible glitter or this beer in general. A very fun. Uh, Sour Meat, that's the name of the series that it comes from. They have a lot of cool things like that. Uh, But moving along, Hole Punch Dreamsicle from Hitchhiker Brewing Co. That comes in at number three for me. Uh, That was a milkshake IPA. I actually forgot that was a milkshake IPA because I thought it was a sour. 
Uh, so I was like, that was even better than I remember it being. <laughs> uh, so that's probably one of my favorite styles of beer. So I'm always going to be a sucker for that. But I remember it like tasting like a like a dreamsicle. It had the creaminess, but you still get the bite and the the flavor of the the orange part of the of the dreamsicle was really prominent there. So that was a lot of fun. And that one's from here in Pittsburgh. So that's always exciting. Uh, going into my number two, Zombie Ice from Three Floyds. Of course, I think Three Floyds is going to be on every single one of these lists unless I don't have it in the year. Uh, so this is just their Zombie Dust, which is probably my favorite beer. Uh, it's just double that, so double the zombie goodness. Double the uh, pleasure, that's really, double the fun. It, all around, dude. Everyone was happy. Yeah, I, I mean, it's got that that nice bite to it. It's it's a pale ale, which you don't really see like straight up pale ales. I mean, this is a double, um, so that's always exciting. And and again, I was kind of like biased towards it because I love the brewery and I love uh, zombie dust. So, anyways, zombie ice. That was exciting that we get it here in Pennsylvania now, so I can have it all the time. But number one was Hetty Topper from the Alchemist. I knew like it, it was kind of unfair because I had already had it and I knew that was really fucking good. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a great double IPA, dude. Just how like smooth it is for how bitter it is. Nice body. The Alchemist is such a cool name. And I'm happy that it is more readily available now because before it was like kind of harder to get. I mean, before I'm talking like fucking 10 years ago, but let's keep it moving. Why don't you start us off? Now we're getting into the music. We're going with our EPs first. Yes, this top five EPs of Q2. So I'm starting out at number five. This is actually a band uh, I didn't know about until this past month. They are the Motion Mosaic. And I thank Ben Kemp for this find. Uh, they released their EP Limbo Conditions. And I don't know how to describe them other than think gray haven eat it a little bit but more raw sounding okay that, okay that's pretty much all i can say about them but uh <laughs> i loved every track on this ep so it really stood out to me and has left a lasting impression for me to include it on this list next up teeth a biblical yes. worship of nice. violence nice it just i mean come on that ep is so good i don't know what else it's just so fucking good. <laughs> That's all you can say. Uh, and number three, though, Misery Whip. This is a death metal band uh, with their Alpine Militant EP. Uh, once I heard this, it shot up, dude. I was just like, yo, who the fuck is this band? <laughs> uh, and they have like a cool saw as part of their logo, which is awesome. It's Hell nice, yeah. It's a nice touch, but... <laughs> Anyone who loves death metal, uh, check out these guys. I, I'm not kidding. Like I was that impressed with these guys. They're number three. Lot. Yeah. So they're number three. Number two, Brain Dead, Misery Volume One. Have yep. one. Yep. Everyone should be listening to that EP. Every bass drop. Last but not least, number one, Wretched Tongues with Torment. Mm immediate like after the first lesson i was just like yeah 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 and for it to beat brain dead that was hard but yeah that's my number one everyone should check it out i get a little bit of winds of plague vibes just because of the oriental sounds they use instruments that you would like here and even the artwork uh there's like a samurai yeah so it, that the pageantry kind of makes me think of winds <laughs> of plague but uh <laughs> They don't really sound like Winds of Plague. It's very much no. more de deathcore with almost a Born of Osiris influence, if you will, just with those nuances I just talked about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if that's fair to say, but uh, everyone should be listening to that EP, and we hope to feature them one day on this podcast. So I'm going to put that out there into the universe. We love you, Wretched Tongues. Um, so that's my that's my five. How about you, sir? Lead us off with your again this is the top five eps of q2 so these are ari's picks number five is teeth for me as well uh well not as well you had it a little higher up but i wanted to include teeth a biblical worship of violence just yeah like todd said the band's fucking stupid they're great and uh just a lot of chaos a lot of 
a lot of goodness coming from that one. Uh, okay, so moving on, we have Rotnest with Torture Portrait. Ooh, yes, that's a great pick. And and this one moved around a lot, like I will say, for like various lists. And I was just like, I just don't know where to put it. Kind of like I don't know how to like really describe Rotnest. Like it is deathcore. It's a little bit more down tempo, but like it's very emotional, which I'm as anyone that's listened to the show know, am super into. Uh, and it's just like really creepy. So I was like, dude, I don't know. It's got to be in here somewhere. So number four is Tortured Portrait from Rotness. Uh, I just kept going back to that one, dude. Number three, and it paid me to put it this low, but uh, Wretched Tongues with Torment. Uh, I really, really liked it, dude. It just came out not that long ago. And yeah, it shot up to the top of of the list. It's It's fantastic. And I know they're, well, not for sure. Like they're based in PA, I think, or like around PA. So long. Oh, I didn't know that. It's it's somewhere up this way. Maybe maybe that's just wishful thinking, but I'm pretty sure they are. Um because they're gonna be playing with uh Belzebuff and Snake Father pretty soon. Which Ooh, is pretty sick. That's yeah. a good lineup. Yes. Well, I will say with that at, at your number three, this is making me way more interested in what your number two and one are now. Yeah, it's going to be like not a surprise, but like kind of out of left field compared to the other three. <laughs> um, these are a little bit, I wouldn't even say more. Well, one's more mainstream, but number two is Fox Lake with Fear and Loathing. I've I've been waiting for that one for like a year. Uh, not just me, of course, but all the Fox Lake fans. And it did not disappoint. Uh, there's like one new track and like like a new interlude but like the whole the whole presentation like the features that they get in there the energy that they bring i love fox lake and i can't fucking wait to see them live uh i know they're coming through like with a couple different things so hopefully that'll that'll happen by the end of the year and also this band i realized i haven't seen i actually haven't seen any of these bands live which is crazy and that needs to change uh but number one is gonna be brand of sacrifice with between death and dreams yo i dude i feel so bad i forgot about that one dude i will have but like the title of the ep between death and dreams i will have that song literally on repeat for like a fucking hour okay. um especially if i'm writing because like I, i'm working i have a script that i've been working on for a while that deals with like sleep and dreams and things like that so like i would just have that on repeats while like writing and stuff so it's it's been frequent if not like the whole ep that song alone is worth it but the rest of the ep slaps because it's brand of sacrifice but it's just like it's one of those things because brand has been getting like so big and sometimes when bands get bigger i start to like like not intentionally forget about them but i'm like oh yeah brand of sacrifice of course so like when this ep dropped i'm like you know what like oh yeah like i i remember why we have kyle the fucking demon king at the forefront of of the genre here it's funny you say that because what I go through sometimes is if I know it's good, I kind of put it on the back burner because I'm, I'm like, OK, I know it's going to be good and I'll yeah. listen to it when I get to it. So but I also think I was on vacation during when this dropped and that's what made I think me you kind of miss the boat. Yeah, I, I think I think that was that was the case for that. But I mean, please go back and listen to it. I need to. It It, it is amazing. And uh yeah, the, and the video for Between Death and Dreams is also very, very fucking cool. So check that out. So those are our favorite EPs overall. Next, we're moving into the brutal EPs. Yes. So the things that are fucking crushing everyone's skull, but we also enjoy and come back to. That's always like the criteria. Uh, you know, this we're not going necessarily on heaviness. That is, of course, like the main driving factor for this list. But mm -hmm. also, if we again came back to it and legitimately enjoyed it um so what do you got top five brutal eps with todd all right so a couple of these are repeats but that's okay that's a good thing yeah i put misery whip as number five because i just nice. it's insanely heavy too which is a like i said a great thing yeah <laughs> but at number four draconian rain man <clears throat> with the tragedy eternal that's a brutal alumni on the show we got to feature them I don't know what can't be said. This kind of is like right up the alley for anyone who's a fan of Lorna Shore, Synestia, all those bands, Mental Cruelty. But it's kind of like a love album, and which which is so cool with the lyrics. Yeah, like, I, I think you put it as like the the My Chemical Romance of like deathcore, 
it's mainly like the album art but i was like that's that's very fitting because like they're you're going for the same thing just in a different direction (laughs) absolutely but i highly recommend go check them out don't sleep on them next up at number three though we have exile to decadence where demons dwell i was looking forward to this band dropping their ep ever since i heard their first single they're out there and wild and it's Mm -hmm. a fun crazy time Super heavy, too. Of course, it's on this yeah. list. At number two, though, I'm going with Psycho Frame, Remote God Seeker. Yeah, this is like quintessential deathcore, even though it's so new. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of the like the band members have been like in the scene for a while, though. Mm-hmm. I love so, their connection to Mood Ring. That just makes everything better. Yeah, that's really why it's up there. <laughs> mm-hmm. But at number one, this is a repeat brain dead. I have to go with. Just out the gates, this album is heavy as fuck, and it does not relent at all through its entirety. Uh, so go check out Brain Dead Misery Volume One. That's my number one pick. Let it flow through you. You'll hear the bass. You'll feel the bass. Go listen to it in the car <laughs> with the bass. With the bass, yeah. So that that's my list uh, for most brutal EPs of Q2. How about yours, sir? These these next two I had as like a tie initially and then i ended up dropping exile to decadence because of that so i'm sorry there's there's a lot that you mentioned that were like in and out and i at some point i was like i think this is correct (laughs) um so exile into decadence is is definitely one of those that that albums or that ep i should say is fucking killer um so yeah really fun but i'm going with number five duress with Beyond the Pines. Oh yeah, great choice. I just I remember we talked about it when it dropped, and uh, and you you had you had mentioned it. Oh, I I was like looking for like the band was Beyond the Pines, and I thought the album was to rest, and I was like, dude, I don't know what we're talking about. So anyway, when that was straightened out, dude, it, it's just that's one of those that even though I might not have frequented it as much, it like always stuck with me, and and I don't know what it is, but that that album fucking rocks, and I love it. It hits Beyond like a pines. bulldozer, which is the first it, song. It is. It is. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so that's my number five. Number four is a newer one. Uh, it is Fleshbound with their Wounded EP. Solid. Uh, yeah, I I think I kept thinking of like a different band, like with a similar name. I'm like, dude, I don't really like Fleshbound. And I was like, oh, wait, no, 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 no. That's not it. Like, this is the one that that's fucking sick uh entity six is such a bang of a song great video i know we've talked about that i think it's only four tracks it's like a pretty short ep but they all rip dude uh so that's that's my number four fleshbound with wound number three is brain dead with misery volume one yeah that that i'm just fox dude what more can be said about that ep yeah. it, it stand out from the gates you listen to it yeah, it's phenomenal. Can't wait for whatever volume two brings, if this is what we already can expect. I love it. Uh, but number two is Wretched Tongues with Torment. That is a repeat, but I could not have it on here because it is also stupid fucking heavy. And uh, having Adam from Oceano is always a plus as a get. So, and Jake from Reflections. Yes. Who can, that's That song's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's number two. Number one, I knew it. As soon as it came uh, onto the scene, Psycho Frame with Remote God Seeker, it sh- they have a shirt that says some shit like no whisper vocals, no singing, like no push pits. It's just like they just want to make it like as deathcore, as beat down as fucking possible. And they, I think, achieved it. It's fantastic. And of course, always a slut for any type of like super group type of deal. So it was it was bound to be number one. Yeah. Uh, that's the solid list, dude. Next up, though, is our top five albums of Q2. And I'll, I'll keep it going with, with going first. At number five, I picked Pupil Slicer Blossom. I just had to. Hell man. yeah. They switched up their sound a little bit on this album. So there's a lot more melody, but there's a little bit of black metal in there, which mm-hmm. is dope. Uh, very impressed with this. At number four, though, I'm going with Detriment UK uh, with their okay. Between Two Evils. Dude, this is uh, metallic hardcore, and uh, it just gets me so pumped up, dude. 
I don't know what else to say. Like it, it is. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one to listen to. So I recommend them. I think it was their debut album too. Oh, nice. At number three, it's a PA band. I'm going with Gloom Doom. They're self-titled. Oh, I don't nice. know what it is about that album. It's so raw. It just feels like they recorded it in like their house. Uh, and I love the, the guitar tones. Uh, it's it's nothing crazy as far as like theatrics or production wise, but uh, there's some cool audio clips in there. I love the album artwork. It's kind of like an oil painting, but it's like this guy wearing this like metal mask. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool It one. almost looks like something out of like medieval times, but I'm all for it. Like it is. Yeah, I, I bought this album. I, I actually really love it. I love listening to it in the car. Hell Number yeah. two, though, I love listening in the car a lot. <laughs> and I'm talking about Vamachara, No Roses Ooh, on My Grave. Nice. Dude, uh, I've been getting into hardcore more, and I would say this is that album in hardcore that has really uh, caught my attention. I love the album artwork. I love the the crosshairs with the roses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. Expect a little, if you're not familiar with them, a little bit of Knocked Loose influence there. Yeah. Give or take, but uh, very much a hardcore album through and through. It's just solid from the first track to the last. Like, and there's a cool interlude. It actually almost makes me think of Loathe a little bit. It's it's the yeah. song that's like an area code or something. That was out of left field, and I love that they included that. Uh, but at number one, uh, I am going with Stasis, Six Shades okay. of Red. Dude, this is like metalcore, but I almost think of like Poison the Well a little bit. Uh, as far as like, you'll hear some some cleans every once in a while, some singing, uh, but it almost is a little Dillinger esque in a way with yeah. how frantic they get with the pace. But I immediately was enthralled by this album the moment I listened to it, and it shot up to number one. I was like, "There's no way!" Like now, <laughs> now this is the album to beat for me. So they're Ooh. they're a new band too. So check out Stasis again, Six Shades of Red. So. I, I recommend that one. Yeah. Anytime you get something like where it's like really like that special and resonates like that. Mm -hmm. It's cool. And it's funny, like even talk about loathe like that. That's how I feel like listening to like, I let it take me or I let it in and it took everything. Like you just kind of like existing and, but also able to appreciate it. And yeah. I wasn't, I was not expecting that to be your number one. You're always coming out of the, of left field with these ones, which, which is great because like, I know like what we talk about, but I feel like what we talk about is only like, like you, you're usually listening to something like way more than I'm just like, dude, I wouldn't expect this. So that's exciting. Yeah, um, and the gloom doom thing too is, was good. That album rips. It'll show by the end of the year, my tastes and genres that it has been like all over the fucking place. So it's going to be very interesting by the end of the year. What my top, <laughs> top albums are. I completely agree. I, I feel like I'm I've been going more into the hardcore and like more like like beat down, slam, like things like that. But uh that's not really doesn't really show for this list in particular, but except one. Uh so we'll get into it. Number five, dude, the the five spot I was flipping in and out up until the like, worst one. Yeah, because I I really wanted to put like people slicer, I really wanted to put Vamachara on there. Uh even even dude, Frozen Soul was up there for me, but there's a lot that I had a really hard time like placing into it. But anyway, so number five, the the coveted five spot, I guess, <laughs> uh, is Jesus Peace with oh, yeah. dot 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 so unknown. I just feel like the raw aggression of like South Philly encompassed into one band. You feel and, like you're in the room with that band on that album. Yeah, dude. It 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 hits so hard. I mean, the tones are like in your face. Aaron Hurd has such a good like presence. Uh, it the the whole thing. I was like, yeah, this. Is, I think I just listened to this one like a bit bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they they just keep progressing, but like while still maintaining the integrity of Jesus Peace, which is just in your fucking face heavy. Uh, moving along, number four is Impuritan with their Wrath album. 
the the influence of White Chapel is throughout the whole fucking album. And then no piano, I hear. Yes, both both like it's just like dripping with essence of both those bands, which is not a slight. That that's fucking awesome, and it kept me coming back, um, especially because like the front man. I apologize, I'm not sure any of the band numbers names, but uh, kind of sounds like Phil, and like they, there's like a lot of mannerisms, like oh yeah, this is bringing me back. So more of like a, an homage to older deathcore. Mm-hmm. That was really really cool. I kept spinning that one. This one I didn't expect to have on there, but I could not have it because I fucking love it. Is Drain's new one, Living Proof. Oh, yeah. And, nice selection. Yeah, just like a really fun hardcore album, even though like it still fucking slaps. It's like, dumb heavy, yeah. It, it's just, I don't know how else to describe it other than fun. Like the, the album art is like all like beach themed and like really colorful and shit like that. And, uh, but yeah, I, I would love to see Drain. Uh, oh, I mean, any of these bands live. But that one in particular, I would love to have like a boogie board and start crowd surfing. And I was going to say great selection for Shark Week coming up. So, uh, Heavy rotation for sure. <laughs> uh, so number two, I'm putting this as one album, even though it is not. Uh, I can do that here. Is the Acacia Strain with Step Into the Light, Failure Will Follow. They just know how to evolve over every like i i they they know they know what's up like they're following what they they need to do for step into the light like there's no frills like they said they're all straight bangers Mm -hmm. uh so you get that but then you also get a doom metal album like it comes in lay in waves and it's one like the best sounding doom albums ever so i had i had to acacia is at like i think they they're at the top of their game even though like continent's still my favorite album uh they just continue to fucking kill it and uh i think it was uh chris rabidou from the breathing process put it best he's like this is like existential horror in an album and i think about that every time i listen to it so i was like yeah uh anyway that's my number two but number one it's so accessible it's dumb stupid heavy it's a throwback but they're newer i'm talking about the spoke zarathrusta all right Uh, i love it Act like you don't know. Dude, it's like 18 I minutes. I do. I fucking love it. Uh, especially they they have all like funny names too, which is like a nice throwback to the, the time, like the MySpace era. But there's one song that sounds like it could be on an As Blood Run Black album. And I was like, you really nailed the tone. You really nailed like the essence of like that earlier stage of deathcore. Uh, so I loved it, dude. And I love the album artwork, too. Uh, the whole thing, fantastic. Um, so, yeah, that was my number one for best albums. Uh, let's go on to Brutal, the best Brutal albums of Q2. Bring the heavy, buddy. Let's dust off this phone. At number five, I am doing a pretext to human suffering with their endless cycle of suffering. It's just an endless cycle of suffering, man. <laughs> that's that's what life is. But uh, everything from like the 10 second intro song, uh, just all the way through. Like, I love the album artwork too. It makes me think of, um, I was at Archfire a little bit with the yeah, uh, it does. album artwork. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I so badly wanted to include other death metal. Uh, these guys are a little bit more death metal death core leaning but this one stood out to me above the other ones that i might have chosen but so that's number five the hard spot to fill yeah at number four i have euclid with revilement yes uh, i'm yes. actually just going to say number three because number three is impuritan wrath and it i had a hard time yep between those two but impuritan wrath just edged it but they're to me, they're both black albums. Like the cover is just dark black with a cool. They look thing. pretty similar. Yeah, but either one, man, just heavy as hell. I believe Euclid starts with this awesome instrumental track that just gets shit going and it doesn't mm-hmm. stop. So that's a number four. Like I said, number three is in Puritan Wrath. Already talked about that. Just dripping in filth. And number two, I put Mental Cruelty, man, with Twilight interesting uh, 
even though there's the Lorna Shore comparisons, which I'm cautious about, uh, it still stands out to me, man. It just I love actually the second half of the album was really great. Yeah. I love the uh how did you how did you put it you put like folk influences in a way yeah yep yeah i love that they involved that i really think it elevated it uh there's like mellow death in there yep so just all that and it, it's dumb heavy on top of it, it. So, so that's my number two even though it's funny because we talked about this a little bit uh i had a different list because i kind of put my overall so you'll wait and see what's to come but that's my number two. At number one, though, Soul Keeper with Holy Design. That's nice. my number one most brutal album of Q2. Think Dillinger. Think Frontierer. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun, too. They yeah. have weird sounds in it to the point of, like, different genres. They kind of blend in there, which I love. I love that they're doing that. But front to back, dude, it is nonstop just pummeling you. And I love it. So that's that's my number one. I, I can't recommend that album enough. I remember you talking about that one when it dropped. And, and I, I never gave it as much time a day. So I'm going to have to revisit that one. Because I remember that it was sick. But it's just one of those get caught up in like something else that dropped that I was a little bit more looking forward to. And it happens all the time. So yeah. that was cool. That was a good solid list, dude. Uh, lots of heavy hitters, and I've got pretty similar ones. Uh, I'm starting mine off with Euclid with Revilement. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that you had sent that over, and I was like, dude, this fucking this slaps. And uh, it also used to be Will Ramos's old band. So, you dude, know, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure that was the same one that he was in. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I think that was like right before Lorna. He was in uh, in Euclid. So even if that's not like a, an accurate representation, you'll get like the vibe of what they sound <laughs> like at least. I love it. Uh, this one I, I kept moving in and out, but I just for whatever reason, I know why. But like I just kept coming back to number four Sledge with Hellwalk. Oh, that's a great pick. It just like. It would stick in my mind all the time. Uh, the opening track, which is escaping me right now, but it's got like a lot of like really like almost like tough guy type of vocals, but not really. It's just got like that more raw uh, energy to it. That's and, how you gotta uh, start when you're walking through hell, dude. You gotta be and, like, all right, let's do this shit. You got your you yourself are the sledge, boom. And that's that's basically like the best way to describe the album is like you feel like you're getting beaten over the head with sledge and uh, i think the artwork too is very much in mm -hmm. tune with the music i love i think they nailed it with that yeah absolutely uh so yeah i i was moving that one in and out a lot but i i do really like that album but uh kind of like you i have impuritan wrath above euclid but I again, those those three were, were moving around. Uh, I already said my piece about that. I fucking love it. It's oozing with those early deathcore day vibes. Uh, which speaking of early deathcore, number two, like my albums is Acacia Strain with Step Into Light, Failure Will Follow. There's no denying that Acacia is still heavy, if not heavier than they've ever been. Yeah. Um, and I'm still putting Failure Will Follow because that's that just like it's. It's still stupid heavy. It's complimentary. Uh, it's complimentary. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my number two. I knew instantly that this was going to be number one for me. I'm talking about Brutal um, Belvobuth with Essence of Evil. Dude, yeah. holy shit. I love that they went with a pink album cover too. They're like, fuck you. It's amazing. I mean, you've got the Seven Deadly Sins all turned into a pretty accurate representation of what they would be like sonically. Uh yeah, it's just like a dirty, filthy album in the best way possible. I cannot wait to see them when, when they're from PA, so they're in the area all the time, and I can't wait to see Bell the Buff and feel the essence of evil alive. Sir, all right, man. This is this is the moment now. We have two categories left. Most Brutal Song of Q2 and then Most Brutal Band. We're going to start with song first. I am choosing, this might be controversial, Better Lovers, 30 Under 13. Ooh. 
right. front to back. The moment that song starts is just riffs on days. You hear Greg Pusciato just fucking belt out, and then you get brought back to Dillinger and combine that with ETID. I'm sorry, but like this song needs to be mentioned. The fact that it came out in this quarter, <laughs> I could not not include it. And so this is me kind of cheating and putting it into the most brutal song, even though it probably isn't, but that's okay. It's a great song. It, it needs is to be talked about. Relentless. It gets you moshing nonstop energy. It loops so perfectly. Like you'll forget that you're playing it and that <laughs> like, Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. How long is this song? It's a great pick, dude. Uh, and yeah, it, it's everything that you could imagine from from the people that are in there. I I went the more traditional route, but I still feel like kind of controversial because brutality wise, but not really. I'm going with the recently released "I the Devourer" from Synestia and Disembodied Tyrant. That's a good one. Uh I mean, just the band names by themselves, like, should kind of be an indication of like what to expect. And even though I knew that, like, it wasn't what I expected. And I really love that because, dude, it was fast. It was heavy. There was guitar solos in there. Not that there weren't in, in these other projects, but it just like, I was like, this doesn't feel like what I would imagine it to be. And it's even better than what I thought it would be. And it's even heavier than what I thought it would be. So, yeah, that that was the one I went with really close i almost put knocked loose but i was like that's kind of a cop out uh but the abhorrent abomination with whatever they're doing is very close to the eradicator is one of the, like the heaviest songs of the year for sure all right man now even though we said our most brutal song q2 this is what takes the cream of the crop we are talking the most brutal band of q2 i'm gonna keep it in line i'm gonna start first soul keeper come on okay. i'm gonna match i'm gonna match the album i chose i don't know what can't be said about this band i just i think they're very special with the fact that we don't have dillinger anymore uh yes frontier exists so they're right on their level but i love okay. just the nuances with this album and they still make it heavy and it's just in your face constant from first song to last I really think the album artwork too kind of just shows you how eclectic and all over the place this album is with it still being just as fucking heavy. So soul keeper has my attention. I know, I think hardcore Keem is a huge fan of these guys. I, I think he's I think got so. a lot of t-shirts with their band name on it, but <laughs> they're doing it for me as far as heaviness, like just batshit crazy heavy. That's what's up, dude. Like I said, You've got me wanting to to go back and really revisit Soul Keeper because I did not give them the time of it'll, day. It'll keep your soul. Not much left, but they can have whatever. <laughs> I'm running on you, buddy. I'm running on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Great choice. Uh, I'm not going to match you in the sense of like, this is who I picked for Heaviest Band. I love you, Bells Above. But I had to go with the goats, a case you strained for Heaviest Band. And I say that not because of what I've already said or the obvious that it's the Acacia strain, uh, but just the fact I can't reiterate it enough, like they're able to progress while still sounding like the Acacia strain, but in a different light, like step into the light. It's just like they're, they're, they're able to evolve is what I'm getting at. And mm -hmm. not only evolve, but like innovate, like having the releases that they have been like how slow decay w was released. Like it comes in waves was left field and even, even two albums that no one was expecting until like a couple days before uh, the doom one failure will follow is not what you would expect at all from a Casey Strait. And the fact that it can still sound like them, but be a totally different genre is next level shit will forever be an a Casey strain fan. There's a reason why they're still, around dude you're making me want to listen to those more i it pained me not to include them but we still got time it's only halfway mm -hmm. through the year this is the only q2 we're talking about guys i had to move a lot of overall picks so there's certainly some in contention outside of what we just talked about and as you heard we continually <laughs> shift 
I always think of ESPN. It's like ranking sports teams. And then like you have the red arrow going down, the green arrow going up. Like that's yeah. how this feels. Like it feels like draft day. Solid picks though, man. I, I'm glad you included it at case to string because it, it needs to be talked about just on how consistent they are, even though they progress. So yes, I love your number one pick and yes, you're not cheating. You can include both. It's a dual <laughs> album. You're supposed to listen to them together. It's a duel. But uh, that concludes our best of Q2. This is always fun for us. This keeps us up at night. Literally. So I'm I'm glad we got to this point in the year. It's been a great year. We didn't know how 2022 could have been topped, but so far 2023 is looking great. Guys, thank you for listening. Stay brutal. Drink responsibly this weekend. Have fun. Celebrate America.